Hi, it's Katrina. Do you believe in fairies? Despite being considered a creature of fantasy, there are many reported cases of fairy sightings, and those people definitely believed they were real. Here are 11 stories of encounters with fairies. Number 11. The Tale of Neil Colton This sighting takes place in Donegal, Ireland in the year 1853. There was a young boy named Neil Colton who was minding his own business behind his house. Along with him were his brother and a cousin. The three were gathering berries together in the yard or something like that when suddenly they heard music. Music that wasn't coming from the house. Curious, they went to go see where the music was coming from, and around some big rocks they found a group of about eight small people dancing away. While they were observing them, one of the fairies noticed the children and rushed at them. When this tiny fairy woman got in range, she lashed out at the cousin and hit her in the face. Now scared, the three ran for the house, but as they did, Neil's cousin fell down and dropped dead. Neil and his brother raced to his father who heard their tale and called the local priest. The priest was able to resurrect the cousin and claimed that if it had not been for the boys, the cousin would have been taken by the fairies forever. Now, the argument here isn't just whether they saw actual fairies or not, but also what caused the cousin to fall dead. And if she wasn't dead, what struck her to make her fall down, at least to be perceived as dead? These fairy folk might make nice music, but better not mess with them. Number 10. The Fairy Fossil in the early 1900s, it seemed like everyone in the UK was looking for proof that fairies existed. Many people had stories, and so scientists and naturalists went about trying to find photographic or physical evidence of them. Writer Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was amazed when he suddenly came across some photographs of some young cousins, Elsie Wright and Francis Griffiths. Amazingly, they had been able to take pictures of the fairies. There were five pictures total, and while many people assumed they were fake, one of the girls said the photos were actually of her psyche, since fairies can't appear on camera because they are spirits. Both girls strongly believed in the fairies, but later admitted that four of the pictures had been faked using cardboard cutouts. However, Elsie, who was 16 when the photos were taken, said in her old age that the fifth picture was actually real. Conan Doyle continued his search for a live specimen, but to no avail. As a joke, in 2013, an artist created a fairy fossil and dated it back to 2.6 million years ago. While some people say it used to belong to a museum's collection, you can get one for yourself on eBay. Number 9. The Tale of David Evans and Evan Lewis In 1862, two men named David Evans and Evan Lewis were heading home after a trip to Brecon, Wales. As they were going down the road, they decided to take a stop at a local farm in order to get enough rest to finish their journey. They were welcomed to the farm and looked on as the farmers worked the fields. As they did, though, Evans happened to see a hill that was somewhat nearby, about 1,200 feet away according to the story, and noticed that there were a string of people walking up it. He told Lewis, and the two began to watch what was going on. As they did, the figures started to dance on the hill. As these people all reached the top of the hill, they danced in a circular pattern and with each stride made it closer and closer to the center of the circle. As they all finally reached the middle, they vanished from sight, despite being in clear view of Lewis and Evans. But just as suddenly, the people returned and did their dance one more time before disappearing into the ground again. Completely flummoxed by what they saw, they told the story to an old man on the road that they met later, and he noted that though he didn't know who the dancing people were, his grandfather used to tell him that fairies liked to dance around the area. No worries, just fairy folk dancing and doing their thing. And now for number eight. But first, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Glad to see you. If you are new here, you know what to do. Click on that subscribe button and let us know what you think about all these stories in the comments below. Number eight, the tale of William Martin and the Postman. In 1887, a folklorist by the name of William Martin was going on a vacation to the Isle of Man. This can be found in the Irish Sea and is close to both Ireland and Great Britain. It's now famous for all of the banks located there. Anyway, along the way, he met a mail cart driver and upon hearing that Martin was a folklorist, decided to tell him about an unusual occurrence that had happened to him. The postman was going about his route as usual, getting all the bags from the various areas gathered into his horse and carriage so that they could be delivered. As he was getting close to returning to his base, only six miles away, he came across a group of fairies, or so he claimed. 
These particular fairies were dressed in red and they all carried lanterns. They apparently had a thing for the mailbags, so much so that they went into the mail cart and threw the collected bags onto the ground then danced around them. Notice a pattern here yet with all the dancing? The postman had to ride hard and fight all night against these beings in red to get back to his base, and the fairies kept messing with him and dancing around until morning came, and then they suddenly disappeared. In any case, he arrived late, flustered, and never forgot the encounter. Was it really fairies? Who knows? Number 7. Mrs. G. Herbert One day, a woman named Mrs. G. Herbert decided to write a letter to the transactions of the Devonshire Association magazine to share her stories about encounters she had had with fairies. When she was just seven years old, she saw a little man, not even two feet tall, under an overhanging boulder in Dartmoor, England. She described the fairy in great detail, or a great detail for what she remembered when she was seven, but then noted that the fairy saw her and vanished without a trace. Later, she was going through the Dartmoor Moors like she had done a thousand times and got lost. This was very odd as she had never gotten lost before and she seemed to have her mind clouded. Unable to make a choice on where to go, she started thinking that fairies were involved. Apparently, if you think fairies are messing with you, you're supposed to turn your pockets inside out. So she did, and it worked. The moment she did, everything made sense again and she was able to get out of the moors. Thank goodness, because there's a lot of strange stuff going on in these moors, and it's said to be haunted by other creatures as well, like hounds. Was it fairies, or was she just distracted? You can't imagine using that excuse now. Oh, I'm so sorry, the fairies clouded my judgment. Fairies are said to have magic. Was this the case for her? Number 6. The Latham Brothers In 1913, three brothers named Silby, Sid, and Clyde Latham were doing work at their family home. Suddenly, they heard their two dogs barking as if something was wrong. They went to investigate what was going on, and when they did, they saw the dogs barking at a little green man. By their description, the little green man was 18 inches tall and completely green from head to toe, wearing a large, strange hat on his head, and its arms and body were unlike anything they had ever seen before. Before they could do or say anything to the little green man, the dogs attacked him and started ripping him apart. The guard dogs don't mess around here. The brothers weren't sure what to do, so I guess they went back to work, ignoring the whole violent situation, satisfied the dogs had taken care of whatever it was. Who knows? Not long after, the dogs came back and they appeared to be very afraid. They checked the spot where the little green man had been attacked multiple times to see if he was still there, but when they went to prove it to their parents, it was gone without a trace. Who the heck was the little green man? A fairy? A leprechaun? Who knows? It sounds like the dogs just got really out of control. Number 5. The Fairy Investigation Society of England Because of all of these fairy sightings in the UK, in 1937 there was a group of people dedicated to the finding and investigating of fairies, and they were called the Fairy Investigation Society of England, and that same year they received a letter from a woman claiming a fairy encounter. According to her, she was staying in a big old house that had a garden that reached to the nearby forest of Birdlip Beaches. After washing her hair, she decided to take a walk around in order to let it dry. As she did, she felt something stuck in her hair. It turns out it was a tiny man, about 9 inches tall, and apparently he was very ugly. The little fairy man had a complexion similar to dead leaves, and he was not happy with the woman yelling at her that she had no right to be there. The two struggled against the other, but when the man got free of her hair, he vanished. Convenient story? Someone pulling the leg of society? Or something more? Number 4. The Tale of E.J.A. Reynolds When E.J.A. Reynolds was 10 years old in 1948, he had an experience that he couldn't really explain to those who didn't believe in fairies. He was in Horsham, England on vacation and went out one night to set some rabbit traps, then, like any good hunter, waited to see what he would catch. While waiting, a nearby blackberry bush rustled, and he turned and looked, and a tiny man came out. He was about 18 inches tall and hairy. The fairy, for lack of a better term, didn't notice the boy, so it went on its merry way. After telling his parents about the tiny, hairy man, they laughed, so he didn't tell anyone else. But then, a little while later, he was on a bus headed back to his school, and he saw the little hairy man again in broad daylight. This time, he was going through a garden. Who are all these tiny people walking around? Number 3. Mary Treadgold Mary Treadgold was an author who lived in England and was going on a trip through the Isle of Mole in April of 1973. The road wasn't very wide, so the bus she was on pulled over to let a car by. As it did, she looked across a peat bog and saw a man digging a hole. There were two problems, though. Though the man had clearly been digging a hole, he wasn't moving. 
as if he was trying to appear like a statue. And again, she reports that he was only about 18 inches tall. The man had a white shirt and overalls, a shovel, a sack on the ground next to him, curly brown hair, and his body seemed to glow. But he didn't move while she watched him. The bus then started to move, which shook Mary from her staring contest. And when she turned back to the spot, she couldn't see him again. Did she really see a fairy? And if not, what did she see? Number two, the tale of JF and friends. In 2005, in Chicora, Pennsylvania, a man who just goes by the name JF was spending the night with some friends. The house was next to some very thick woods and the only light outside of the house was a simple spotlight. As the night drew on, the friends heard something odd coming from some nearby flower pots. They watched the pots when suddenly a creature emerged from it and got in view of the spotlight's rays. It was about a foot tall and had female-like features. Outside of her wings, which she unfolded and showed them in full light and glory. They were a mixture of bat and butterfly wings, as they had the qualities of both, and seemed to actually glow in a pale green light. After lingering for a bit, the creature darted away and headed for the woods. When the friends asked each other what they had just seen, the answer was clear, a fairy. Number one, the tale of Cynthia Montefiore. Fate magazine is a bit of a curious one, as they like to print stories that are supernatural or odd. So in 1997, they printed off a story belonging to one Cynthia Montefiore who had an encounter with fairies at her mother's home in Somerset, England. While helping her mother in the garden, they were standing on opposite sides of a rose bush. Suddenly her mother leaned around and signaled that they should remain quiet. The mother then told Cynthia to look at a nearby rose bloom, and right next to it was a six inch tall miniature woman with sparkly wings, silvery hair, and a wand. It was focused on the flower in front of it and didn't notice Cynthia or her mother. The two watched the fairy for several minutes and then it vanished without a trace. Thanks for watching. Have you ever seen a fairy? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!